Today on Call for Help, learn to enhance your netcast. Good to see you. Welcome. It's time for Call for Help, the show where we understand, help you understand technology, computers, the internet, MP3 players. We explain it. We show you how to choose it if you're about to buy some. We show you how to use it if you've already got it. We show you how, how, do you, how to abuse it if you're one of those people who likes to hack things, you know. And then when you're done, we show you how to lose it. That's, it's, all, it's all in there, those four words. Choose, use, abuse, lose. I'm Leo Laporte, your genial host, the chooser, user, loser, abuser. And this is episode 441. Can you believe they've let us do 441 of these things? <laughs> we pulled it over on them again. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, there's no hoax here. This is indeed the real live Callie Lewis. It's so good to see you. Thank you. you too. All the way up from Dallas, geekbrief.tv yeah. on the podcast, Pod Show Podcast Network. <laughs> you get that switched up, I don't you? I almost got it right once. <laughs> Uh, so nice to have you here Thank filling you. in this month, and, and you've been just wonderful. Today you're going to be talking about something, and I've really been waiting for this review, because I'm very curious. I like the idea. It's called Mojo Pack. It is, and I'm really excited about it, because there are several times when you need an application. There are applications you use on a daily basis, but you don't always have a way to transport that from one computer to another. Well, this does that. So you can, any portable USB device, Take it from one computer to another easily. And, and your whole, everything goes with it? Everything goes You're, with it. Wow. Everything that you've installed on the device, it goes with it. I've been so reading about it, but I yeah. wanted to see it in action because I just, frankly, don't believe it can possibly it's really work. It's exciting. Yeah, well, we'll see it act in action. <laughs> the Mac Medic is here, Jeff Barrett. Basic Mac maintenance routines. Everybody needs to know. It's funny, you'd think everybody would know. This is not common knowledge. He'll show you the things every Mac owner needs to know about. And Alex Lindsay's here. Now, Alex is with the Pixel Core. He talks a lot about Photoshop. 3D uh, design and stuff on this show, but he's also our partner on uh, the Twit Network for our video podcast. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of podcasts himself, and and he more than more than anybody on Twit does these enhanced netcasts. He really knows how to make a netcast. Especially, it's a special kind of podcast for the iPod or iTunes that has images, chapters, a lot of extra information. Enhanced podcasting coming up. He's going to show you how an easy way uh, to get this done. So, and, and it, it's not GarageBand, is it? It's not GarageBand, no. Everybody would think it's GarageBand. They'd say, oh, I know how to do that. You do it in Garage. No. Oh, no. There's a better way. Yes, indeed. But before we go any farther, we really must answer a phone call. Okay. 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 Adam is on the webcam from LaSalle, Ontario. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Hey, Adam, how are you? Hey, Leo, how's it going? I am wonderful. Welcome to Call for Help. Thanks. What can I, I do for you? Oh, look, there he is, that great picture. Oh, what a smiling face. Adam, you're you're just back from school, I think. Yes. Yep. What 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 are you, are you a high school student? Yeah, I'm grade eleven. Eleventh grader, and you're probably the the guy who gets all the computers working, keeps everything running. I'm guessing. Yeah, that's me. I knew it. Well, what can we do to help you in your onerous task? Well, I've got a quick question about Windows and Mac networking, specifically okay. relating to printer sharing. Ah. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine is a small home network. He also asked me to help set up, and for the most part, everything's been working okay. Okay. However, the one thing we're having issues with is printer sharing. Yeah. He has two Windows clients, both of which can see and print from an HP and Epson printer, respectively. Then he also has two OS X clients, both of which can see and then share and print from a separate HP printer. However, I don't seem to be able to get the OS X to see the Windows printers or vice versa. Right. This is a this is a common problem. It's a networking issue. It could well be a router or firewall. It could be a lot of different things. But I have to say, what I have discovered is that the best way, the absolute best way to uh, make all of this work transparently is using an Apple technology. Actually, it's not an Apple technology, but technology Apple has adopted probably more so than uh, Microsoft called well, it was originally called Zero Config. That's what Microsoft calls it. Apple called it Rendezvous for a while. And now, because somebody says, we own Rendezvous, Apple calls it Bonjour, perhaps okay. the single worst name for a technology I've ever heard. Because most of the world, only the French-speaking people can pronounce it. Everybody else goes Bonjour, or Bonjour, Bonjour. It's not even Steve Jobs. 
couldn't say it. So, yeah. <laughs> rendezvous we could do, but bonjour, it's not so easy. It's actually a good name because exactly what it does, it goes, bonjour, comment ça va, how do I talk to you, give me some information. It is a, a zero config is also a good name. It's a way that peripheral devices like printers can automatically be configured to run over networks. And now, most modern printers, are the printers you're using pretty recent? Yeah, they're all within the last year or two. Oh, yeah. Most modern printers support Bonjour or Zero Config, and Windows will support it too. What I would say, first of all, you've got it already built into the Mac. In fact, you, I know when you've seen add a printer on the Mac, you see a couple of different types of printers, one of which is Bonjour, right? Right. You've got Bonjour, you've got LPI, R, uh, 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 you've got. Um, or LPR, which is line printer, you've got IP printer, um, and you're trying to do it with probably IP, right. which is very tricky. Bonjour handles so much of this, and it gets it done, and truthfully, it seems to get around a lot of issues. So what I would suggest is, uh, first of all, make sure you've got Bonjour-compatible printers. You probably do. Okay. You can install Bonjour for Windows from the Apple site. If you Google uh, uh, Bonjour and Windows, it'll go to the Apple site, and here it is, Bonjour for Windows. It's version 1.03. It's pretty up-to-date. Um, and then you can even run this on Windows to see Bonjour printers on the Apple and vice versa. Are the printers attached to the computer or are they attached to the network? They're attached to the computer through what, uh, two are USB and then one's parallel. Yeah. Parallel may not work, but the USB almost always will work. Okay. So what I would suggest is getting the Bonjour running on the Windows and then I bet you, you will see, it's, it's kind of, I have to say I've done this and it's magic because you've been banging your head against the desk and all of a sudden you open up the ad printer and there it is. Right. It just shows up. Uh, you'll, in most cases, Apple already has the drivers you need. You may need to get the drivers on the Windows side. Windows does not come with as complete a set of drivers. Um, but I, this is probably the best way to go. There are all sorts. Of, can you do file sharing between the yeah, computers? Yeah, file sharing work is working great. It's just the printers that seem okay. to be the issue. Then I think this will solve it. If you can get file sharing going, that means you, the firewalls are not getting in the way. Right. Um, You've got printer and file sharing turned on, all of that stuff. So I think it's, this is, it's merely a configuration issue, and a lot of times it's just finding the printer and getting the printer hooked up with the proper port. Uh, and and I, I don't know, I've been doing this for years, and it's always been a pain. This really makes it a lot simpler. Try bonjour. Okay, thanks, Leo. Au revoir. Can I get an autograph <laughs> Bonjour. Picture? You can, absolutely. Hang on. In fact, I even have a few twit pocket protectors. If I can look for one of them, maybe I'll get Callie to autograph one. I know it's against her religion. <laughs> sure, thanks. I appre really maybe, appreciate maybe that. Maybe I can get her to autograph one. Thank you, Adam. Okay, thanks, Leo. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, uh, well, don't hang up yet. Get, we'll get your address. Then, then say bye-bye. Calling all Internet producers. Are you tired of the old school approach to podcasting? After the break, Alex Lindsay will clear up the mystery with some helpful hints. Enhanced podcasts on the horizon. Full speed ahead, right through those commercials. We'll be right back. or as many old timers used to call it, podcasting, offers a limited number of program formats. So it's no wonder many of you feel encouraged to get into the podcasting game. However, there can be some confusion over the do's and don'ts of these formats. MP3, AAC, enhance, to enhance or not to enhance. Here to show you how to enhance uh, and, and do it easily, Pixel Course, Alex Lindsay. So what is, you know, I'm used to MP3s. Most of my podcasts are MP3s. I do it in a few other formats. What is an enhanced podcast? An enhanced podcast is basically um, a, a little extra information that's being added to the MP3. So well, it's, it's the it's using uh, it's all stacked generally on top of the AAC format. So you can't you do it without an AAC format? And you and it gives you chapters and it gives yeah. you images and additional headings. So and because it's a, a format that Apple kind of promotes. It's right. really iTunes and iPod only, right? Which is, yeah, I mean, that's true. But that's how most people listen. 90% of the people right. who, who listen to any kind of podcast or whatever are at least 90%, that's conservative, are listening through iTunes. If they have iTunes on their PC or their Mac, uh, or if they have an iPod that they're syncing, they're going to be able to listen to this. Okay. Um, Can you not listen to it if you don't have the right equipment? It doesn't mean, if, well, if you, you... just don't get the enhanced stuff. You just don't get the enhanced. If you, okay. So if, as long as it'll play AAC... Which most 
MP3 players can. will. Yeah. Okay. Um, then so you, it's really kind of a thing, an added feature for those people who have the right software. Exactly. Or it hardware. doesn't really take anything away okay. otherwise. Okay. So um, now let me show you what it looks like when you're actually playing. So when you're in iTunes and you're actually playing here, um, what you'll see is this is one of your podcasts this week in media. Right. So this is this is week in media, and and here you can see uh, down here. Now if I go up to chapters, you'll see I have all these little chapters. And that's that's by really, the way, a really nice feature. Really, really useful. Even yeah. if you don't want to have links and all the other pictures and everything. Else, it's really nice to be able to jump to exactly. I want to hear what they're saying about the democracy player or Walmart right. or digital domain. Um, I can immediately jump to that and skip over. I don't really care about PodTube or TubeSock right. or Milo or whatever. <laughs> Tube, Tube <sock. laughs> Okay, it's one of those shows. It was one of those shows. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so uh, I can uh, quickly jump to that stuff. So that's one feature. Okay. Another feature is is that I can connect these little images, and so these images. Um, as it plays through, you'll see these images are changing. That's kind of fun. Now, on the iPod, you see that in the window as yeah, album art. Exactly. So that shows up as the album art. Uh, so it's popping up. So we're talking about the zoom here, and you so can see you the see little zoom, zoom popping yeah. up. Um, and so, so it's not video, but it does give you some visuals. A little contextual. It doesn't make it a lot bigger, too. And now you can put a lot of these in, and you don't have to have them all connected to chapters. So you can have a bunch of images popping up between each chapter. So they're not, they don't have to be tied completely together. Now, this is the part, of course, that I like, is that a lot of times when you're listening to this stuff, you're listening to NPR, or you're listening to something else, and, and uh, you hear something, oh, that would be, that's really, that really sounds interesting. And sometimes you don't feel like, uh, you know, you, you have to look it up. I have to do or... Google or whatever. Well, as a developer, I can hook a link straight into the enhanced version. So You type it for us. I type it here so you can see Zoom down here. If I roll over it and I click on it. That's actually a link? It's going to take me straight to the article that we were talking about in Gizmodo. That's um, kind of neat. You know, so it's going to jump straight to the internet here. And um, here you can see it loading up here. So so that is, these links will, t will take you straight there. Now, and, and it, it makes it much more useful for the person listening or watching or whatever. Right. It also, um, it sends them to exactly which article you're talking about. It's one thing for them to do a Google and get to some article, but this is the one we're actually talking about. Right. We can link it in. So so that's what that's what the enhanced podcast is all about. It's also great if you're doing sponsorships. You're, you have a better chance of click-throughs and you know, mm -hmm. that type of thing if you're trying to, you know, turn this into a business. So there's there's a couple different ways to do this. By the way, you can't click on an iPod. But at least you can do it in iTunes. But you can jump to the chapters. So when you go so the chapters next, and next, the, next, the, the visuals chapters. are there, just not the links. Exactly. So uh, so that the reason I don't do this on Twitter is because it's a lot of work. It, it's 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 some work. I'm lazy. It's it, it is it is it is. It is a, I I complain about it if I have to do it. I yeah, do it occasionally yeah. to make you sure. You have that people to do this have, for you. <laughs> no wonder you. Well, no wonder no, you but, like but it. But I do I do a large amount of these because we're building training right now. and I'm right. building training, and so um, it takes about for it takes me about. Um, about one to one. So, so for an hour podcast, an hour to enhance it. It takes me about an hour to well, enhance it. That's not it. so bad. So it's, it's not really, really bad. It's kind um, of comparable to editing, editing it. It's just a, another step. That you yeah, exactly. And edit. what I use it as is my check, my final check. So yeah, because you got to listen to it. And i got to yeah. listen to it. So I finish the edit, and then as I'm listening to it. That's another thing I'm, I don't do. As <laughs> some people have noticed on occasion, some strange things do happen, and I, you know, I, I forgot to listen before I put it out. That's, so That's part of the fun of listening to my podcast. <laughs> yeah. And I'll miss things here and there, but a lot of times, because uh, one of the things you can do is listen at double speed, which I'll show you, which oh. is how I, I tend to listen to stuff. you so, start stamping your podcast, inspected by number 12. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so one way to do it is, I'm not going to talk about this too much, but one way, of course, the most uh, common way to do enhanced podcasts is with GarageBand. Right, and that, um, well, that, you right know, that came out with iLife 6, and, oh, mm -hmm. 2006, and that was a big revolution. I mean, it, it was yeah. the first time it was really easy to do at all. Yeah, it was really, you really had to Painful be, before. Yeah, it was really People painful. People like Adam Christensen, who've always used their enhanced podcasts on their podcasts, I'm just blown away yeah. by the amount of labor he must have gone through oh. in the early days. Yeah, in the early days, it was really bad. Yeah. This is pretty straightforward. You're simply dragging media into a, into a window. Um, when it gets to where I want it to sit, so if it's right here, for instance, I say add marker, it's going to, you know, create a new um, a new chapter here, mm -hmm. and I can simply, pretty visually, just kind of throw stuff in. The the great thing about GarageBand is that it's easy. The hard thing is that it's a little heavy as an app. If you're only doing, if you're going to add music, jingles, um, if you're going to actually record into it, right. do the mix down and then here, you use it, it all. It makes sense to do the right. do the podcast. That's here. really what it is: a recording program, music right. program. So if you're going to add all of that stuff to it, then it makes right. sense just to do the enhancement here in, right. in, in GarageBand. But if you're doing it somewhere else, I use Soundtrack, you use Audition mm -hmm. um, to do a lot of your work. If you're producing that audio somewhere else, then it makes more sense to, in my opinion, to use an app that's just specialized in doing 
uh, podcast. This is a new app podcast. too, and boy, this makes it even easier. It's really, I, you know, I tried it on a whim and just really got caught up in it. So this is a this is a podcast program, podcast maker, podcast maker. And this is done made by Potion Factory, and um, what Podcast Maker does is it does a lot of things. Now it's set up to be able to publish your podcasts and send podcasts out and do all kinds of other stuff. I don't use any of that stuff. Now all I want to do is add my chapters. So here, um, in in kind of in the same way, I can listen. I have my my uh, my tracks up here, and what I can do is I can listen here, and you'll uh, let's see if I start playing here. And this is a little preview. So this little preview window pops up, and it shows me that's what's going to show up mm -hmm. in in iTunes. It's giving me that, that little preview here. Now I can jump, you know, over here and start listening. You'll see that here I am. We're talking. You're talking about, about podcast maker, here. yeah, yeah. So um, and I could click on it to see if it's all working the way I want it to. So it also um, allows those links very easily. Oh, yeah, I so see. It's a whole other column. Is the link? These are these are the these are the columns on the links. Link title. You'll link. see here. I didn't. I, I deleted. You had an image the chapters, you... so it's not the, this will only oh, show up as one chapter, but it's going through the different people. Ah. That way, I don't have to have a chapter for every single thing that I'm ah. showing. So I can have different things and different links. I can have Got multiple it. links under each chapter. That way, it doesn't get messy right. in your in your chapters. Now, one of the things I like a lot is that I can, uh, for instance, you'll see this little one X up here. If I turn this to 1.5, this is actually a feature of QuickTime that's hidden in the AV controls. But now I'm playing back at 1.5 the speed. So I can listen to it a little bit because a lot of nice. times I can listen. You know what you were I know there. What I said, you know, you were, so yeah. so I can hear it just a little bit faster while I'm working on the links. Right. And I and um and typically when you're working on this, you're simply you know you're going in here and you're just saying I want to you know I'm going to add a chapter. So it popped a chapter right Does in it, wherever. So it, and it's wherever you were in the podcast at that exactly. point. Exactly. Okay. You know, and it just keeps on adding. And you'll see that. How even, accurate do you need those to be? Do you, you think? You I sometimes depending on how fast I'm, how much time I have to put it out. Um, I usually do it as I'm listening, and I just hit so it. So it might be a little later than when yeah. the person starts talking about it. Sometimes something. I'll go back and nudge them. The times can be edited Oh, here, okay. Because okay. it's just an XML file. And you can, so can you drag the little uh, 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 I could, marker? I could drag it, but it's easier for me to actually just go back a second right. or two. Like, oh, I just barely yeah, missed yeah, that. And, yeah. and so I, and I, and I'll tend to, um, you know, do that. I can zoom in here if I want to. So this is the, in this timeline I can oh, get. Oh, wow, look at that. You know, I can zoom in. And, and, and I have to say that this is a really, it's turned out to be a nice interface to kind I'm of move through really, really quickly. Yeah. You know, and and then all all of this stuff is just me doing screen grabs. Um, I use specifically I use a program called Snaps Pro. Snaps now is usually, great. Yeah, and we usually use it for video. But the great thing that Snaps does that's different than just using the what's built into into the Mac is it lets you name your files as you're shooting them. Uh. And so so I set up this is the name because I save everything to one folder. And I just want to be able to go snap, and then I type it in as I'm capturing them. Otherwise, you end up with picture one, picture two, right, picture three, right. and it's it's a real. Pain and does it me. take that name from the picture, or do you have to type it in again um, in podcast? Well, I just drag it. I literally drag images just into these little wells. Okay. So I don't even I don't I don't go find it anywhere. Um, I imagine I could. I, I just never tried. Uh, all, all I do, you know, I'm a typical Mac user where I expect everything to be. It just drags. Uh, if if it doesn't drag and drop them, I usually get pretty upset about the whole thing. So so um. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be bothered. It's How much is Podcast Maker? Um, Podcast Maker, uh, I believe, thirty no, bucks. I think it's like thirty dollars. Thirty bucks. Yeah, I know so why. You know you I know. Bought it. I just bought it. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and I actually am blown away. I think it's, I just can't wait to use it. Really, really fantastic. I may value. even enhance my podcast. Don't count on it. I'm God just saying forbid. I might. God forbid. <laughs> I might. Well, we do an AAC version of Twit of this week in tech. Right. But I, I rarely enhance it because it's so much work. Right. But I do have to listen through it, make show notes. This is just one more. And it's, it's, it's a very detailed. Be, it's a good way to make show notes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With times and everything. Can it output a text file? I don't know if it notes? can. That would be kind of um, handy. It would be really, really cool if it yeah. could. That, that'd be. Pro and and the, the other thing that I found is I've actually sent this company emails, going, I really wish it would do this, and and um, you know, it's they're immediately working. Potion on it, so. Factory. We're we're looking for you to add the ability to export this to a n text notes file. Form. Notes for, form. For notes. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Alex Lindsay is. The big cheese behind his group of multimedia artists, the Pixel Core at pixelcore.com. And to learn more about enhanced netcasts, visit our site. I'm going to call them netcasts. I hope you don't mind. No. Call, I just like that better. Callforhelptv.com. Of course, it, as long as you have to use an iPod and iTunes, you might as well call it a podcast. Well, we're, we're doing netcasts in, <laughs> in podcast, podcast maker. maker. <laughs> now, let's turn the page as we see what's happening with today's next tech quiz question of the day. My goodness. What were the clones called in the video game Robotron 2084? Was it John, Jane, and Jeffy, Ted, Sarah, and Tommy, Jack, Jill, and Jimmy, or Mommy and Daddy and Mikey? Go to the website, give it the answer. We'll talk about it. We're going to help continue. Call for help. 
It's Call for Help. Welcome back to Call for Help. I'm Leo Laporte. Callie Lewis is way over there. The restraining order requires her to be 10 <laughs> feet away at all times. Actually, requires That's my me. restraining I, order. I, right. I misstated that a little bit. No, uh, no, no. I, <laughs> yeah, I, was I have to stay 10 feet bit. away from you. I asked you for your address and then. You do? Oh, yeah, but I gave you my P.O. box. <laughs> No, Callie, you know, you and you and Neil, uh, your husband, who is here also, keeping an eye on you, so Mike won't, you know. And uh, and uh, it's just been great having the both of you. You're wonderful people. We really love having you on the show, and I do want you to come back and, and be a regular part of this. It's not so far from Dallas, is it? Uh, a little bit far. All right. And it is, uh, you know, it's winter's coming, but it's not going to be that cold. Oh, well, there's no winter in Dallas, and I love the winter. Do you really? So, yeah. You I might just come up here to... Be in the winter. Really? Yeah, in the snow. Mm. You guys used to live in Chicago? Yeah. We're, it's actually colder in Chicago than it is here in is Toronto. It? Oh, yeah, much. Mm. Oh, yeah. We, I would say it's much colder there, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, it's practically balmy here. We've got palm trees here. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's the next caller on the line? Steve is in Montreal, Quebec. Oh, even warmer in Montreal. Oh, my goodness. They, they barely have winter at all, right, Steve? Oh, we love winter over here. Yeah, you, you know what they say? In, uh, winter, winter in Montreal is, uh, our summer in Montreal is just a couple of weeks of bad, bad uh, hockey, right? Yeah, uh, yeah right. Today, first day of hockey. <laughs> is it? That's right. That's right. Go Canadiens. That's right. Now they're going to stone me in Toronto. What can I do for you, Steve? Well, um, I've got an old JVC mini DV camcorder. Yes. And, um, as I'm sure you know, the, the built-in microphones on those things are pretty terrible. Yes. They're not really intended for anything but, like, you know, birthday parties. They're not really intended for real production. Right. And, see, they, they pick up, you know, all sorts of background noises and, Wind. you know, sound coming from moving parts inside the Absolutely. camera. Absolutely. Yep. And um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to hook up a wireless microphone, much like the lapel mic I'm pretty sure you're wearing right now. I am, and it is wireless. I'm not exactly sure how to do that. See, I can move around. Can move Nobody can touch me. I can run. Yeah, of course, we spend, I'm, these are probably thousands of dollars for these microphones, very high-end microphones. But yeah, I'm hoping I, you can help me out with something that I wouldn't have to take out a second mortgage. I my promise I can. We've got in the room right now for video podcasters. I warrant all of them use wireless microphones of some kind. So I'm just thinking, in fact, Alex Lindsay, if you're still around, I know you have a choice for wireless microphones as well. This is uh, what uh, Sean and uh, uh, Andy Walker use on Lab Rats. These are Sennheisers, right? Yes, yeah, so Sennheiser G2s. Sennheiser G2s. And uh, they have XLR connectors. Yeah, and you can swap those out for 8th inch jacks, so you can hook them straight into the camera. And as you well. could buy any kind of uh, lapel mic you wanted, right? Right, yeah. These uh, I'm wearing this right now, actually, right here, and uh, it just connects with a standard 8th inch jack. What, so what kind of lapel mic I is that? This one right it's here. It's also a Sennheiser? It's also a Sennheiser. But you don't have to have it. No, you can yeah. get a better one as well. You can change it from unidirectional to omnidirectional How much go cardioid. You, that's important, by the yeah. way, is, the, is whether it's uni or omni. Uh, unidirectional, you can aim right at his mouth. The only problem is if, it, if at any point it gets tilted, you kind of rely on uh, somebody watching or your talent to make sure that they don't tilt it, then it's going to be off mic. And, you, and really, the sound will be awful. It'd be worse it, than having it the on-camera sound. Uh, if you get Omni, well, then you don't have to worry about talent, <laughs> you know, because we know how talent is. But you'll also be picking up any other room noise. So you kind of have to decide, do I want a quiet? If it, is, it a, is it a noisy environment? And can I trust my talent? That kind of thing. How much? We paid about 700 Canadian for these, Ooh, about 600 US. For one set? For one set, yes. Wow. Okay. It's a bit pricey. It's not cheap. Um, Callie, do you guys use wireless mics? It's actually the same exact one. You use the Sennheisers <laughs> yeah. as well. She yeah. recognized it. All right. Uh, Alex Lindsay, we do a Mac break. We're going to wire Alex up with one of our mics. Uh, Alex Lindsay uh, does Mac break and a lot of, actually, Pixel Core does a lot of uh, video now. What do, you, what do you use for um, uh, wireless mics? Uh, we use, actually, for the wireless ones, we're using the Sennheisers. It's the same well, one. it's three out of three. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, think those they're are good the, mics. Mike, what does Van Den use? We don't use Sennheisers, but I don't know the exact brand Because Brian bought them, and whatever Brian has is what, what you use. It might be so Sony. is the Sony's. kind we use here. We're using Sony's, I believe. The, yeah. the Sony's are, are, are much better. Um, they're just a lot more expensive. I mean, they get like $2,000 a pair, I right. think. And, the, the, or, and a lot of the expense is the capsule, is the actual microphones are very expensive. The, the other thing that's a big difference between a, a high-end mic and a the one that we... The, we have a pretty good one. I mean, there's ones that go below that, but... Uh, in San Francisco, we use all wired mics because we, get, we there's so much RF that we can't find a channel that we're guaranteed is going to stay good through an entire Might show. be that way in Montreal, too. Um, I don't know what the recommendation would be for anything cheaper. 
S do you? Samson makes one. S A M S O N. They make very inexpensive mics. Yeah, they they, they make a, they make one that'll hook right into your little uh, your little camera, your little eighth inch. Uh, it's not wireless. Like though. He was looking no, for wireless. It's, it's two hundred fifty dollars. Oh, it is Samson. wireless. Yep. Okay, so that would that probably be your best uh, bet. Two hundred fifty bucks. Is that in the price range, Steve? Well, I guess I'm just going to have to save up a little bit. I guess it's not that big a deal. This you're actually picking an area of a fairly high expense. I mean, these as soon as you go wireless, you're starting to act. You're starting to get a little bit expensive. I have to be honest with you. We're yeah, gonna, I mean, you're paying for the quality, I suppose. So. You you are. I mean, and most people. That's why most people just use the built-in camera microphone. But frankly, you're right. It doesn't sound great. The other thing is, is that you have to really decide why you want to use a wireless mic because the 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 thing you're 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 dealing with is, is if you're just doing what we're doing, I'm using a wired mic at the moment. You're wired, right? And now. and and a wired mic will work if someone's just standing there. The reason you need a wireless mic is if someone's moving around a lot. But otherwise, you're going to get better. It's going to be a lot cheaper, and you're going to get a much actually a better sound oftentimes when you're using a a wired mic. I bought a, uh, wire Audio Technica wired mics, and I'm very happy with, mm -hmm. uh, and they were not hor horribly expensive. So right. there's some very good choices if you're if you're willing to go wired. Of course, we also use these Countrymen, and this is another way to go. We have mics. In fact, I, I could run. I, could, I think I have one here. Oh no, I packed it already. I could <laughs> run and my get my get one. Out. No, it's all right, Mike. Don't go 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 get it. But they're little mics that you that go right here. Uh, in front of your mouth. They mm -hmm. are wired, but they give you a, a good sound even in a noisy environment because they're so close to your mouth. Uh, Audio Technica also. Uh, Countryman. Countryman actually makes yeah, it. That's the Countryman, but doesn't Audio Technica also? They, they make, make another one, yeah. They make another. Like kind about of the same mic. price, about 400 bucks a piece, I think. 400 bucks each. So there's a lot of answers for you, Steve. Probably too many. All right, well, I'm going to look it up a little more and uh, see what to do, but I okay. appreciate the help. You're very welcome. Absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Uh, we're going to uh, start doing a podcast. Alex wants to do a new podcast. We're, we're thinking of a name of it for it right now. It'll be a video podcast on exactly these issues, on how do you, what equipment to use, how do you make a podcast, how do you do video, all of this stuff. Because we know people want to learn that stuff, and uh, we'd like to do more of it. So watch for that probably next month or the month mm -hmm. after on twit.tv. Did you know that your iPod can now do more than just play music and netcasts? Mojo Pack will let your iPod store applications for use on another PC. In fact, your whole setup. It's, I, I've been dying to see this. Callie Lewis is going to show us Mojo Pack. We'll call for help. Continue to stay right here. Cheater, hmm? Would you like a way of taking your games and other applications to work without getting caught? Or maybe uh, you'd go to school, a library, uh, a friend's house, uh, mom and dad's, whatever, and, and you'd like to bring your computer and your applications and all your files with you. Well, we're going to tell you how you can do all this as long as you don't tell anybody else. Callie Lewis, everybody's favorite geek spy is here from geekbrief.tv. <laughs> she is our fearless leader. We bow down to you. Oh, fearless leader, as Agent XXL, I beg of you to show us the secret of taking your work uh, your files to work and using them even though the boss doesn't watch you. I, I know, this could get you fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say you're not going to do but, that. Let's say you're going to your friend's house and you want to bring yeah, your stuff Yeah, well, I mean, well, there or are actually library, legitimate... Or a library, cafe, lots sure. of places you might want to do I mean, this. there are several legitimate re ways. I mean, when I still had my day job, I needed to use Photoshop. It would have made, helped me look better in front right. of the boss. It right. would have done a lot of things for me, presentations, that kind of thing. But... They I won't couldn't let you use install it. anything. They won't on the let computer. you install it. Yeah. So I could have had Mojo Pack and been able to, to use Photoshop. And so this lets you run applications you haven't installed on your computer as long as it's installed on this device on the device, whether it's an iPod or a USB key. Yeah. So you you Mojo Pack any USB device, portable okay. drive, um, including an iPod. iPod. And people often you have can, gigabytes left on their iPod. Absolutely. It's a good choice for that. Yeah. Anything that can fit on here, any application that could fit on whatever drive you have. Right. Right. Then you can take and What's the process? And How do I install the application onto the, my uh, external it's, drive? It was so simple. You just open up, you go to mojopack.com mm -hmm. and you install it. It's $50. Okay. And you just install it. It opens up. This I, is it? It kind of looks like iTunes. It. Well, this is oh, okay. <laughs> I have I iTunes say, installed. Boy, that looks like <laughs> iTunes. So you're running iTunes off of your... Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. Okay. This is the Mojo Pack. And I love how easy it is so to this switch is, this to your host desktop. computer. 
Wait, what? Well, uh, this is the this this, this is, is the, the hardware this is the you're computer. running on, right? And you click that button, and, and suddenly this, this is the is Mojo logo. Pack, and anything installed on Mojo Pack, including desktops and, and right. settings and everything, all that came. Everything on. is installed on oh this, God. so wow. you're not actually whatever you do, passwords, nothing is is left behind. It's all saved. So on the it's iPod. all taken with you when you eject your your iPod. So or you your install disc. the Mojo Pack program, right? And then what? And then you install whatever you want you to be able up, to have portable. So you have this MojoPack desktop, and now you're installing, whenever you install yeah. in MojoPack in this desktop, you're installing it really to it, the iPod. Exactly. Whenever you have oh, see this, very this uh, icon here, mm -hmm. and you, if you switch to host, then you're installing on the p computer itself. But if you're in this setup, then you're installing straight to this. Which is, it's really, is this even possible? It hardly, it hardly seems possible. But it is. And it and works. You'll vouch for it. I will. I, I've been, been playing it. with it. Yeah. Wow. And, it, you know, I, I think it's a great way to, something I would use it for a lot is to be able to manage my uh, podcast or netcasts right. and songs so that you can take it with you. If I'm listening, traveling, I want to go ahead and delete things because I right. like to keep up with deleting whatever right. I've listened to. Right. So I can just kind of keep up with things and, and organize that way. That's remarkable. Yeah. Now, uh, it, does it take any extra room? I guess not. I mean, I guess it's just whatever you've installed. Yeah, it's there. whatever you installed. I mean, if you want to keep certain things that you already have, like maybe, you know, iTunes and then Yeah, obviously you I've can got music install, on here. It's going right. to be whatever room is left on, on the machine. Exactly. Yeah. So whatever application you can get on there, then you're good to go. $50, MojoPack. $50, right. MojoPack.com. Pretty amazing. MojoPack.com. It works. It actually does what it says it does. It does. I haven't run into any problems. Wow. And a great way to surf and other stuff and keep your information private. Right. If you want to learn more about Callie and GeekBrief.tv, her wonderful podcast on the Podshow Podcast Network, just go to GeekBrief.tv. You want to learn more about Mojo Pack? Well, you know where to go. Call for help. TV.com. <laughs> we'll be right back with more of your calls. You stay here. I can't believe it. I know. I didn't realize it was just. Welcome back to Call for Help. Leo Laporte here. Callie Lewis over there, who is, I know, right now thinking, what a dark. He really can't dance. <laughs> you mock my dancing, young lady. I do. But I but can it's... bust a move with the best of them. <laughs> I can't. I would dance worse than you. That's why I don't dance. Oh, you don't dance? No. Oh, come on. I don't dance. You I could only dance, dance if you want to. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, what is that, Men Without Hats? You can dance if you want to. Anyway, why don't you? Why don't we get through this and okay. just do a call because this is <laughs> clearly not going anywhere. Dancing. Yes. This is John from Gloucester, Ontario. Hola, John. How are you, John? Oh, tickety boo! Tickety boo! I find myself boo. calling you. Well, I'm. I'm glad you did. Well, you know, I. I, I just. Thought I knew it all because I've learned from the expert you. Well, I don't know it all, so I don't know how you could possibly well, know it. Well, <laughs> I tell you, I got a lot of respect for you. Eh? Thank you. You're very kind, John. I've got two quick questions. Two quick questions. Yeah. One, I had Gmail for over two years. Yay. And of course, I'm an idiot. Did back up, and I had a crash. Okay. And do you think I can get my Gmail back? Sure. I've got my voucher number. You know what? You don't even need your voucher number. Your account is already good. You already... I can't get into it, though. Well, you need to know your password. Don't you know your password? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, no, that... but my, my computer won't bring it up. You can't go to google.com slash gmail? Nope. What happens when you go there? Nothing. That's the catch. Well, there's something wrong with your computer. If you can't surf the net over to Google, I mean, that's the... Sur that's like, the... I, like, I can bring up Google. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Google CA is what I use, eh? All right. So, so maybe you... then when you I go in and say Gmail, yeah. nothing. It just it goes and waiting, it finds page, and then it just goes on and on and on and on, trying well, to recover it. That, no, it's not recovering anything. That's nothing. It has nothing to do with your computer. The nice thing about Gmail, the good news about this, John, is there was never any mail on your computer, ever. So... The nice there was thing never any mail in my, in my Gmail? And there, there is, but it's in Google. Google's keeping it. You, you don't have it. In fact, the advantage of Gmail oh, no, is... No, no, no. I know I don't have it. It's on, it's on the network. Yes. So I've probably got about 2,000 uh, 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 yeah, notations there now. It's all still you know? there. 
The point is that it doesn't matter what computer you use, if you log into Gmail, it'll still be there. So here's the first thing I do is see if you can log on to somebody else's computer. Okay. Uh, there's something wrong with your computer if you can't go to google.com slash gmail. That's well, well, don't you, well, like, you know, when the person gave it to me, eh? Uh, you don't need gmail. that. No, you don't need that link anymore. Oh. You don't need that. Stop clicking that link. Okay. That's the problem. Fair ball. Throw it out. That was only the first time because gmail had to verify that you actually were the person of that email address. Right, right. That's been done. That was done three, two years ago. Okay. So all you have to do is open your browser. Firefox would be best, right? Yeah. You know that. Yes. And you go to google.com slash gmail. Yes. Not that long thing they sent you. Just See, that's no longer good. That's done. Okay. That's the problem. Now you go to google.com slash gmail, and you'll use your Google email address. Mine is Laporte. Right. And then you'll enter in your Google password. Mine right. is 134... Wait a minute, let me see if I can get that right. One, three, four, nine, three, six, four. Oh, I keep typing it wrong. One, anyway, <laughs> once you enter it in, your mail will pop up. Okie dokie. That's all. I, I can see where the problem is now, is that you thought you needed to reuse that. Yes that uh, link and you yes, don't. They, yes, because they, oh, they were the one that gave me the account. Eh? You never need that again. Okay. You never need that again. That's why I can go to any computer. I don't click that link. I just enter google.com slash gmail, enter my login and password, and you know what? The good news is even though you lost your computer, all of that two years of mail is absolutely still there. <laughs> you know, I had 1157 the last time I got on when I had the crash. Oh, you don't have to worry. That's the beauty of using Google you Mail. Know, I, you know, I, no, no, I won't commit suicide. I'll just erase them all. It's just know, email. Yeah. And hey. my last question, you may not want to answer it. Okay, then I won't. Oh. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I got a doozer, a million-dollar script. You with me? You, uh, no, but go ahead. Okay, I'm writing a script. Yeah. A oh, uh, like a movie script. Yes. Million dollar movie script. A yes. doozer. That's yeah. what it's going to be worth. Worth a million dollars. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, you know, there's not one on the planet like this movie mm. I have dreamed up. And you're telling me this? Uh, it, well, there's a reason why. You want me to star? I'd be glad to. Uh, what, I, what, I, I got, uh, what do you call it now? Do you remember your first, final, final draft? When you can't remember anything? Oh, I final draft. Yeah, great program. The proper, yep. you know, software yep. and yep. all that yep. stuff. Yep, yep, yep. But, you know, I need to have a good editor that I can trust. Maybe you know a good editor. You mean like a guy who edits film? Yes. No, I don't know anybody. Oh, boy. And then number two, I want to sell it as shares on uh, the Internet. Oh, boy. I'd be careful on that one. Well, you, oh, you know, there's get, crazy get, people out there. I beg your pardon? There's crazy people out there. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I, you go sell it on the Internet. Who knows? Somebody could say I own part of it. Oh, 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 no, no, they, they buy a share, one dollar share. Oh, so they only own one dollar worth. Oh, you know, exactly. listen, there's a million people, eh? There's this, produ there's this movie called The Producers. Where the they Producers. The Producers, I highly recommend it. You watch this movie because what they do is they sell more shares than the movie is worth. They sell like a thousand percent, but then it's a flop and they keep the money. John, I have no advice on business deals like that. Believe me, if I knew more about business, would I be here? Thank you for the call. I appreciate it. Right now, I want to tell you that finding your way... <laughs> it's a doozer. It's a million-dollar idea. Would you like to be an editor? No. Would you give me a buck to give him to invest? I, I will sing for his movie if you want. I know. Finding I your, your, we're going to sing in a okay. moment, please. Patience. Okay. Finding your way around Wikipedia could sometimes be a chore. Finding your way back to articles you've previously read is almost impossible. So that leads us to a whole free file. Absolutely. Mike's got uh, cookie, cookie crumbs for Google. Well, kind of. No? No. It's a map of Wikipedia pages you it's, visited? It's kind of. So, for instance, I'm on iTunes right now, and I have $40 to spend for videos, right? So there's a Little Mermaid page. It's one of my favorite movies of all Do time. Do you know John? No, I don't know John. Okay. But Little Mermaid, like, you know, under the sea, I'm, I'm, the I'm, weather is better. Always wetter, under the sea. I know this is going to, oh. at some point, get to uh, something to do with Wikipedia. I just feel yeah. it. So, like, before I spend my precious money... Before you spend your precious money... On The Little Mermaid... I want to make sure. You can dance, Callie. She's got moves. 
I want to make sure that I'm spending the right money, right? Yeah. So I figured, let's look it up in Wikipedia. So I'm going to go to this program I have called Pathway. Pathway. Right? So I enter in The Little Mermaid. This show's going downhill so right? fast. Yes. No, no. Listen. <laughs> okay. Okay, wait. Yes. Okay. It's so, a doozer. So Little Mermaid. So it's going to pull up information about Little Mermaid, right? Yes. So let's say I'm clicking here and let's yes. say yes. all the Little Mermaid statue yes. and yes. I'm going to click on this. Yes. I got to go quickly, I Oh, guess. look. It's making a, it's like you're making a math of where you've been. Exactly. Oh, this is really slick. So I can say this and now when I've gotten distracted about this home brewer's kitchen, I can say, well, where did I start from? This is from? perfect for people like you. I can look back and I can say, oh, oh I under went the to sea. Little Mermaid. So a trace, it is kind of cookie crumbs where you've been on the, uh, kind of. the So I can go back here, buy the Little Mermaid and be very happy and then sing under the sea. Under the sea. The weather is better. The Always weather is better. better. Have under you ever wondered do, do, if you do, do, really do, do, need do, 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 that reg, uh, uh, peculiar application that seems to be, uh, you know, just hanging around on your desktop? We're going to show you how to use or lose those utilities right after the break. But first, one last chance to take our next tech quiz question of the day. You're turning bright red. What were the clones called in the video game Robotron 2084? Was it John, Jane, Jeffy, Ted, Sarah, Tommy, Jack, Jill, Jimmy, or Mommy, Daddy, Mikey, Mikey, Mikey? We'll be right back after this. Right, Mikey? Right, Leo. In two days. Jack the Giant Slayer is the first giant adventure of the year. Giants! Jack the Giant Slayer. Friday. Welcome back to Call for Help. Before the break, we asked you what the clones were called in Robotron 2084. Who here played Robotron? Ah, uh, so is this yours, Shawnee? I have no idea. Uh, I'm gonna say John, Jane, and Jeffy. Because I just like those names. Mommy, Daddy, and Mikey? Was it really? No. Well, I thought that was the joke answer all along. Fooled me. Bet it fooled you at home, too, except for those of you who spent many a quarter playing Robotron. Like any uh, piece of machinery, your computer, it, it's a tool. It may be a highly complex tool, but it, it's a tool like any other, and it needs a tune-up once in a while. The Mac Medic is here, Jeff Barrett, to show us how you can keep your Mac in good shape. Uh, and the utilities you need to run those basic maintenance. This is something everybody should be doing. Yeah, you know, OS X, uh, some people think you know you never have to do anything with OS X because it's just so stable. It does kind of chug along. It does. But, you know, some people also complain that it starts slowing down or... Right. The beach ball of exactly, death. Exactly. Just yeah. something's not right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, built into every Mac, and there's a few utilities I want to talk about. Most of them are free, and there's a little industry of these little utilities there all is. over the Internet. There's yeah. just tons of them. So, you might have your favorite. But... There's I mean, a cocktail, and there's, I mean, there's a million the, of them. Let me see the ones you really like, because you do this all the time. I do all the time. So I, every Mac comes with disk utility, which is Apple. start. So, you know, if you're going to run any system update, the one thing I suggest you do is repair your permissions before and after any major update. And you can just launch, Disk Utility comes with every Mac, it's in your utilities folder. You launch it, it'll show the name of your hard drive, you click on the name of your hard drive and you click repair disk permissions. This oh, can okay. fix so many problems, you're having printing issues, network issues, Th this one little thing. Do you can, suggest doing this on, uh, on a regular schedule? I would do it on, definitely on a regular schedule. How often? At least once a month. Okay. And definitely after any update. Now, just because it finds some permissions to repair doesn't mean there was something really wrong. It seems to always find no, something No, and to with fix. 10 4, 6 and above, I if it it may not find any permissions to repair and it tells you that. Oh, okay, so good. that's a good thing. That's to an know improvement. About. That's right. Didn't used to do that. Now if you want to go beyond disk utility, and disk utility can do a lot of things, but there's a lot of more a lot more things out there. There's one called Tiger Cash Cleaner. Uh, I don't know that one. And it's uh, and actually, they charge for this one. It's $8.95, although mm -hmm. you can run it as a demo. And it can run things like permissions, but it, then it runs all these maintenance scripts. You know, OS X is Unix-based. Right. And at night... They're supposed to run. They're supposed to run at 3 in the morning, these self-maintenance routines. But uh, not everybody keeps their machine on all night. Right. Right? So these, let you, th these utilities let you run those routines mm. that you don't normally get to run. Plus, you can schedule them. Uh -huh. uh, one thing I really like about this utility, it has built-in antivirus stuff, it's really to protect uh, our PC friends. Oh, well, that's worth it. That's right. It's got built oh, it looks for PC viruses? Well, it looks for, well you might get a, a Word virus on, on occasion. And it looks an for attachment. Yeah. yeah, so it has built-in uh, Clam AV support. Oh, that's a very good that's antivirus. Right. So okay. you can run that as well. Plus, a lot of these utilities, I'm going to get rid of this one. Oh, it's going to Clam AV is an open source antivirus. That's why they can build that in. But that's it's actually right. kept pretty up to date. That's right. Uh, a really graphical one I like is Onyx. 
It's got a pretty icon. It's, well, it's got a, yeah, it's got a very pretty icon. Yeah. I love doing these icons. I've used Onyx before. I think I, I think I, I think this is one of my favorites. Yeah. Well, you get these yeah. nice big buttons, mm -hmm. and you've got I parameters like you can use. It's going to go you know, through the to different parameters to give us a choice of what we can see here in a second. Um, the cool thing with a lot of these utilities now is it doesn't just repair your permissions and the cron scripts. You can turn off dashboard, you can turn off spotlight, you can rearrange your dock in places it's not supposed to go. So that's what you know these utilities do. You can clean this out. You've got you're cleaning your, your browser cache out, your font caches, your application caches, which actually make a really big difference uh, in the performance of your applications and stuff. And stuff. stuff. <laughs> I like that. Did you run out of steam there? I ran out of steam there. And stuff. <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, yeah, this is my big one. This was my that was big. It. This I'm was sorry. my. Well, you, Any, anything else there? Well, you know, uh, for power PC computers, this is good for. Uh, uh, Intel-based computers. Oh, you know, that's a good question. Are all of these universal? The ones I've just shown you are, okay. but, but uh, for PowerPC, there's some. Uh, uh, there's one called Disk Warrior that I've used for years with a for lot of my Al clients. Soft, a classic, that's right, and yeah. it does not work with the new Intel-based Macs right now. So right. if you still own a PowerPC Mac, it's to me an indispensable utility. It's kind of an optimizer. It is. You boot up from uh, the CD itself, mm -hmm. the disk utility, the, the uh, Disk Warrior CD, so you can't run it locally. Although right. it does some smart checks for you, right. it installs an extension, but this thing has saved so many of my clients. See, now, I thought for some reason that you didn't have to optimize OS X disks. That's, well, that's kind of Well, it's more true. the directory. You're not really optimizing it in the old kind of speed disk up. days and Norton Utilities. It's, it's actually checking the directory. I see. And so things like volume bitmap and that right. stuff still happens. And it can actually cause a lot you of problems. You like that better than Micromat's tech tools? I, yeah, way better. Disk Warrior. That's like, to me, if you can have one utility, PowerPC based only at the moment, but there is one coming sure from Intel, it, yeah. that's the one. Alsoft. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I have time for one more. One more, go ahead. There's a great, again, PowerPC only, although the guy's working on an in Intel based one, and it's in my show notes, Applejack. Never heard Applejack of Applejack is a utility, you install it uh, when your, your Mac is in good shape, and you can only uh, access it if you boot up in single user mode. Okay. So you boot up your machine, you hold down the Apple key, mm -hmm. the letter S, and you get your white writing on black background, yeah. you think, what's going on here? And you type the word Applejack, and it runs these routines for you before the whole machine boots up, and that's a great utility to run once in a while. And it well. saves uh, the, the working settings? That's or? right, so well, what happens is you're having an issue, and let's say you can't even boot up properly, it's stopping mid-boot. Right. This happens before the full boot process, so you can actually go in and do diagnostics like disk utility before it comes Fantastic. in. Fantastic. It's a great Applejack. Utility. Applejack, and he's working Again, on Again, only on PowerPC you want. That one, yeah, but he's working Intel. on an Intel version. Good. So. Hey, I'm going to write all this down. Okay. That's great stuff. And, and, and other stuff like that. And other stuff. <laughs> Magmedic <laughs> is Jeffrey. He is the greatest. Magmedic.ca. Medics, plural, like that, like it says here, see? .ca. You can also find our show notes and links from the segment, including links to all those. Definitely. I don't have to write it down. No, so no. Call for LTV.com. Hey, show ain't over yet. Get back here in a couple of minutes. Our final thoughts. We'll see if we can wrap this show up. It's a doozy. Right after this. Stay here. Love doing this show. We get, you know, what I love about it is we get such interesting callers, and it's just fun to talk to people, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's you great. You should have callers on Geek Brief. In five minutes? Mm, yeah, I guess. Not. <laughs> Short calls. I think, I think he was Two five seconds. minutes just saying, you know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. That was great, though. It was fun. Yeah. Geekbrief.tv on the Pod Show Podcast Network. It's a must see, must see TV. I just point that. If you want to be on this show, remember. Go to the website, callforhelptv.com. If you've got a problem with your personal confuser, don't whine. Don't moan. Don't yell. What do you do? Call, call for help. help. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> I love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>